Hello, everybody. Hope you're well. Hope you slept well last night and you're ready for a brand new day. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to spend a few moments with me here on SML TV. The first thing you need to do for me, wherever you're watching me from, whether it's from Australia or or the Maldives, or Cape Town, South Africa, Ghost Town, South Africa. You know, I, I, heard, I recently heard about a, a, a township in Cape Town called Ghost Town. It is so dangerous out there that the police do not go to Ghost Town, South Africa. It, it, it's, it's worse than Chivolia. One would compare Ghost Town to Chibolia, except that in Ghost Town, they shoot you down with a gun every time they blink. In Chibolia, it's different. In Chibolia, they sell drugs, and every so often, they'll hack your hand off or something, you know, for some, some minor infringement. But over there in Ghost Town, South Africa, boy, they'll shoot you right square between the eyes. And they will look the other way without a worry or care in the world. But if you're watching me from Ghost Town, South Africa, hello to you. Call the police for something while you're watching. Hello from Washington. Thank you so much. Please tell me if I'm loud and clear and we can get the show on the road. I'm using my phone today. I'm using my, my phone. I'm not using my webcam. I'm not using my DSLR. I'm using my phone today. I love to use StreamYard because it aids me in, in when I'm teaching or when I'm speaking. Uh, it's very easy for me to throw up the text. And that really sort of goes a long way in, 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 in emphasizing uh, certain points. But, but we're, we're not going to use StreamYard today only because I'm not able to use it today. So you got to use what you've got. Okay, as they say, use what you can. Wonderful. So it, it, am I loud and clear to you? Very clear, somebody says. Thank you so much. Guys, very quickly, I just wanted to walk you through. For those of you that are interested, as you know, and let me just bring you up to speed. We recently had a by-election in Kwacha constituency and uh, Kabushi constituency. The main contenders in these two constituencies are members of the, of the Patriotic Front. Kabushi, uh, Mr. Bowman Lusambo, was supposed to be running there. In Kwacha, it was supposed to be Mr. Malanji. Of course, they were both disqualified, and there's been a lot of hoopla, back and forth legal wrangles. Ultimately, ECZ announced that yesterday would be the day that the elections would take place. Amongst and amidst all of this political noise, one side people are saying, no, just let these two run. Another side are saying, no, you have to sort of argue the fine points of the law. Regardless of all of that political noise, the election went ahead. And the results that are coming out now is that in Kabushi, the UPND member of parliament, or rather the UPND candidate, uh, has emerged triumphant with a little over 5,000 votes. Now, let's bring this into context. When Mr. Boman Lusambo was running for, for Member of Parliament for Kabushi, it's important to note that he garnered, you know the word garnered? He gathered almost 18,000 votes in that constituency. But let's be mindful, let's be mindful that this was at a time, this was a, a, a general election, and of course, typically in a general election, more people turn out to vote than they would in a by-election. Okay, you must understand that. If you don't contextualize this, if you don't look at this with, with, with sort of a fair, with fair vision and a balanced vantage point, you'll be misled. So let me repeat that. When Mr. Bowman Lusambo was running for that seat during the general election, he gathered, he garnered more than 18,000 
votes. Now remember, Kabushi has a little over 49,000 registered voters. Okay, that's 49,000 registered voters in Kabushi alone. And this man, Bowman Lusambo, during the general elections, garnered over 18,000 votes. Again, I have to say, remember, this was during a general election, number one. Number two, this was at a time when the Patriotic Front, they were in power and they were on standing on the precipice of a, of a completely new administration, which ultimately happened. Uh, the Zambian people voted out PF and voted in UPND. Notwithstanding, Bowman did gather 18,000 votes. Now, the, the UPND candidate that has just been announced as the winner in Kabushi only gathered a paltry 5,553 votes. Okay? Now, that's due to many, many things. One of the things that causes that is voter apathy. Okay, now, there are many ways to define voter apathy, okay? But the, one of the ways I think that we should de define it in this context is voter fatigue. Guys, we have just come out of a major general election. apathy, <laughs> Voter apathy, eh? Na tunaka, abena kabushi, na banaka, na baba banaka, kabili na baba ntu. There are also people there. So bane muila ibe pabufiati yo, eh, bari mufienga boman, nga boman ari minina, ngari ngari wina hands down. Well, you don't know that. You don't know that, and and, and it's up to the people of Kabushi to decide. And as far as we are concerned, when I say we, I'm talking about the Zambian people, okay? Uh, I'm not speaking about myself. I'm saying as far as the Zambian people and the voice of Kabushi is concerned, whether it's 5,000 people who have voted, or law, 18,000 people, the people of Kabushi have spoken. They've spoken. They've chosen their candidates, whether you like it or not. So don't bury your head in the sand and think, no, if I were to fienga. In any case, let's be truthful. Let's be honest. In any case, even if Bowman was able to stand, and in this new dispensation, in this new political climate, had he lost he would have still turned around and said, Muamona, Banjivira, they have stolen my votes, these chaps, these UPND chaps, Banjivira. He would have been singing that from the mountaintop. So, damned if you do, and damned if you don't. So, here's my encouragement to the people of Kabushi. Move on, Bwana. As my, as Bambo. Just move on. You've selected. Now move a salabo. But Chiti, I wish you were nation. I will catch you in the man. You are And then my comments. Atiba Mulenga, Kushikan Mulenga, or whoever is now Musala. You've chosen. Now, let me, let me, let me bring you up to speed on what's happening politically in Zambia. You see, the Kawushi Kwacha constituency is a classic case of the chickens coming home to roost. Are you familiar with that term? The chickens coming home to roost. Could somebody in the comments tell me, how do you say the chickens coming home to roost? Say it. Say it in your language. Okay? The chickens coming home to roost simply means all the bad things that you did in the past have now come to haunt you now. All of the bad things that you did in the past, all of the skullduggery, all of the underhandedness, all of the unfair play, all of the sidestepping, all of the unfair gimmicks that you used to play on your friends, 
Let law have come back to haunt you. That's what this is. The word of God calls it the law of reaping and sowing. It is a law. Reaping and sowing. Boman Lusambo. By Malanji and the Patriotic Front, as we say in Zambia, are simply reaping what they have sown in the past. That, that, that to me is, is clear. Or if you know about it, in the words of President, former President Lungu, this is there. This is there. So don't be caught up in this by-election. And, and it is wrong and it is disingenuous for any of you to think that this, these two by-elections are, are the game changer in Zambian politics. You are just dying to yourselves. The elections, the by-elections, kukabushi, no kukukuntuanyukukukukwacha, they have happened. And we have moved on. I guarantee you, 24th of October, which I think falls on a Monday, we shall be talking about other things. By Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week, Mutale Mwanza will do something or someone will do something. The Zambian people don't care. We have moved on. Kabushi, Kwacha, you've selected members of parliament. They are going to go there and they are going to represent you. And I was very disappointed, I must tell you, I was very disappointed to hear Vachishimba Kambuidi. Bareva Abena Kabushi na Abena Kwacha at Mwika ya Vota. Ayomano ya Valenshina. Those are Lenshina type of tactics. Kuti no Mwika yako. Teapana badi. In the words of GBM, Tabaide. Tababuela, Tabavota, Alivota. Muri le nshina, le nshina le ti, Mweba le fo kuvote la kaunda. Muri ba mchalo. Mweba naba kualesa, If you want to save God, don't vote kaunda. E ma tactics yaba le nshina. Nga mweba avantu, when you tell voters, Mwila yako, mwika vota. Mwika sala. Ayomano ya vale nshina. It's got no place in present day real, albeit real politics. Wake up. Wake up. Smell the coffee. Smell the chihuahua. Smell it. It's happening. And it's real. And you must say something. But when you stand there in front of a camera and you kama na okufu kama. Pama kufi. Omwina Zambia. Mwayafu kami na omwina Zambia titulepa pata mwebe na kabushi mwika yako. Mwebe na kwacha mwika vota. What are you saying? Lenshina type of politics has no room, no place in this modern day real politics. You are amateurs. All of you, amateurs. Okay. So, and, and I'll give you an example. I'll give you a very good example. Do you know that former President Lungu's presidency was based on hand, underhanded tactics? Did you know that? Widest or while the Zambian people genuinely, at the time, genuinely did like President Lungu. Because some of you forget. You see, this is why it's important to document things. Let me take you back. You remember when Vasata died, when uh, late when Vas, uh, President Sata uh, passed away. In Zambia, there was a lot of political angst. Are you familiar with that word, political angst? There was a bit of a, a leadership crisis. When President Sata died, there was a vacuum. For a small window, a small period, 
People didn't know who the next president was going to be. You remember that? There were names floating around. There was uh, uh, Given Luvinda, a few other people. But then out of the bush, oh, there was a ram in the bush, boy. All of a sudden, a ram in the bush appeared in the name of Ed Galungu, whom nobody paid attention to. Nobody knew that that was going to happen. Guy Scott dismissed Ed Galungu, and that's what sparked the love for Lungu. All of a sudden, people, no, Ed, Guy Scott, I time for Edgar. Edgar, Edgar, Nina. Who's the Edgar Lungu? Who is the, I, I didn't, but I didn't even, he was a trusted man for Basad. He was also a secretary general of the Patriotic Front. He was a lawyer and he was very close to Sata. And people now started talking about this Edgar Lungu. That was when the Zambian people ascended and rallied around this man named Edgar Lungu. But let me explain to you. Do you know that when it came time to the convention, the Patriotic France Convention, do you know what happened there? Abena Innocent Karimanshi. This is, this is the reason. Innocent Karimanshi. Some of you don't know. That's why Karimanshi was a very key component in Edgar Lungu being declared as the sole candidate under the PF ticket in those days. Who orchestrated all of that? It was the Innocent Karimanshi. And his band of crooks Thieves, vagabonds, drug dealers, and despots. They stopped everyone and anyone who tried to challenge Edgar Lungo. Do you know that? What I'm giving you, if in the Mieva, Tebufio, Chishinka, Edoni history, Mwila Chita deny history, yo. I'm telling you the honest to God truth. This is how it happened. Or as the Americans would say, that's how it went down. Kalimanshi and his group of, his gang of thugs, they barred, they stopped, they hindered, they fettered anyone that dared to challenge the presidency or the nomination of Edgar Lungu. Stopped everyone and anyone. Ultimately, Valungu was declared the sole candidate to, sa to stand on the PF ticket. That's how we got President Lungu. Now, it's important to understand that while Kalimanshi and his band of crooks and drug dealers and thieves and, and vagabonds did that, we can't ignore that the Zambian people at the time genuinely liked President Lungu. And we genuinely voted for President Lungu. President Lungu's candidacy was obtained dubiously, but his election into office was done legitimately. Oh boy, that's good boy. Boy, I tell you what, I couldn't repeat that even if I tried. That's God there, boy. Let me try to say that again. While President Lungu's nomination, his candidacy, him being nominated as the sole candidate on the PF ticket was done dubiously. His election into office was legitimate. So, that's why I'm saying, if you feel it's like a kukabushi, na kukwacha, is a simple case of the chickens in Koko coming home to roost. So where is the difficulty? Why can't you move on? They did it, and it has also been done to them. Now, I'm not here to argue about the fine points about whether or not it was ethical or 
the, or you know what, what the fine points of the law. There are experts out there who can do that. Me, my job is not to sit here and interpret and apply the constitutional law and things like that. That's not my area. There are people who are assigned and who are very good at that. I don't do that because that's not my forte. That's not my forte. That's not my strong suit. I'm just here to tell you the facts of what they are. The facts of, of what happened. Kabushi. Kwacha. Classic case of the chickens coming home to roost. <laughs> that's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? I think that's beautiful. Well, hey guys, thank you for watching. God bless.